I cannot <clears throat> answer the question why. It's beyond me. Disbelief was my first reaction when I heard what had happened to my family. Disbelief is my continuing reaction at the thought that anybody could do anything. So, so crazy. A woman with two small children and a little dog. It's Tuesday. At about 4.10, Lynn Russell collects her two daughters, Josie and Megan, from school. Was it good? Yeah. Together with the family dog, Lucy, they set off on their walk home through the countryside. It's a walk they make quite often and normally takes about half an hour. The family are seen heading across this field. They're spotted again here, minutes later, climbing over this gate. It's the last definite sighting of Lynn and her daughters. It's now about 4.20, and presumably they walk down Cherry Garden Lane, just a few hundred yards from the prominent local landmark, Chillenden Mill. This is as far as they get. Sometime between 4.30 and 4.45 p.m., the murderer strikes. The attack was horrific and brutal. The injuries were extensive, caused probably by a blunt instrument, possibly a hammer to the head on all of the victims. To speculate on a motive um, is probably improper at this time. One can only wonder at uh, what, uh, what the motive is. Around about quarter to five, a lady was driving her car along Buckland Lane, rounded a bend, and next to the junction leading down to the murder scene was a car in front of her. The car was light in colour, possibly beige. It was quite old. It uh, had possibly a GB sticker on the back and an, an anti-static strip which was hanging down from the back bumper. There were also some noticeable square headrests uh, on the front seats and it had black mud flaps. Less than a mile away, about 20 minutes later, a man out walking sees something that strikes him as suspicious. Although his view is from a distance, he sees a man in a distinctive red top standing beside a beige car, then climbing up a bank and looking around. He later calls the police, who discover one of the children's blooded bags hidden in the hedge near where the car was parked. There are features about both sightings that suggest they are linked. Uh, we think the car may be the same, the, the driver may be the same, and we're clearly very anxious to trace that driver as soon as possible. Somebody must know who's committed this wicked and evil act. He would have been covered in blood. He would have reacted in some way. It's vitally important that anybody who knows the identity of the killer to come forward before he gets the opportunity to do the same thing again. I can't imagine that anybody can be so cold and inhuman as to, to have no feelings of guilt or it's difficult, the theories fly back and forth. Is it a madman? Is it a person who cannot have such feelings? I don't know, but I would say to the person, please give yourself up for the sake of yourself and others around you. I worry about the community locally here Many people are living in fear still, unable to take their children out for walks in the countryside. He is effectively holding a whole region to ransom by not giving himself up. Detectives have released this EFIT of a man they want to question in connection with the murder. Call them now at the incident room on 01227 817043. That's 01227 817043. Remember, your calls will be treated in the strictest of confidence. So when I look at cases, I like to get a geographical understanding of the area. So the red icon is the school. The yellow line is around about the path they would have taken home. And the white arrow is around about where they were found. The blue icon is a car which was already parked down the lane when the family walked past which suggests to me that they wasn't targeted 
This man just so happened to be parked down this lane. He let them walk past for some distance, then he drove up behind them and demanded money. This man rifled through their belongings and actually took stuff with him. One of the girls tried to run away. The man chased after her. The mom tried to defend her and this is when the assaults began. Due to the severities of the attacks, this says to me someone with severe mental health issues. For me, this is someone that's suffering from a drug-induced psychosis. It's very chaotic and it's very desperate. So let's talk about Levi Belfield. I wouldn't believe a word Levi Belfield says. Whether he says yes, whether he says no, I just wouldn't believe a word he says. He's in prison for the rest of his life anyway. And he has a history of confessing, then denying that he confessed the crimes. He'd done the same thing with Millie Dowler. I'm not saying this wasn't Levi Belfield. I'm just saying I wouldn't believe the word he says. Now for Michael Stone's defence team to get him out of prison, they need a big reason because he's had he was trialed twice and he was found guilty twice. In 2017, I believe it was, a documentary about the Chillinder murders came out and they were pointing the finger at Levi Belfield. And Levi Belfield made a statement saying it wasn't him. Right, I, Yusuf Rahim, formerly Levi Belfield, publicly respond to the allegations made today, Wednesday the 29th of November 2017. Firstly, let me apologise to Mr. Sean and Josie Russell for publicly raising the horrendous event of the loss of their loved ones. On Monday the 27th of November 2017, I was made aware by other in inmates that inmate Richard Baker, a convicted child stranger rapist who is serving a life sentence for his crimes, has made allegations to Mr. Stone's legal team about myself. Reference Mr. Stone and his position. From day one, I have endeavoured to help his legal team if not only to clear myself from crimes he is convicted of. I offered him a polygraph test, which I also would take, but he refused. Yes, they hold no, no, no weight in law, but nevertheless a public platform to build on. I have signed authorities to release my DNA samples from the police. I have written many letters of invitations to Stone's legal team, inviting them to come and take my samples, DNA, hair, blood and fingerprints. All declined. What was most alarming, and in my view, very misleading, was the BBC programme, The Chewingdon Murders, screened on the 6th of June, where it stated I refused to give my DNA samples. This could not be further from the truth. I've been offering my samples since 2015. I've done all I can, as previously said. I again invite any media agency to take my samples or even attend HMP Franklin and witness me personally taking a polygraph test. In the circumstances, this is all I can do. So in 2017, he denied it was him. And in 2022, allegedly, he confesses to it. But like I said, I wouldn't believe a word he says. Either way, he's in prison for the rest of his life. And do you think Levi Belfield's conscience all of a sudden hits him and he's going to um, confess to a crime? Or is he doing it because he enjoys the attention? Okay, the evidence against Michael Stone is weak circumstantial if that but apart from the so-called confession from Levi Belfield what's the evidence against him that he said he did it that's not good enough for me because I wouldn't believe a word he says so the first question I would ask myself is this what was Levi Belfield doing parked in the middle of nowhere up a country lane at the age of 27 what reason was he there I read somewhere that apparently he was a, a cab driver and he was taking a client to Dover but it still doesn't explain what he was doing parked in a country lane. Whoever killed the Russells was already there. He had decided to drive down that country lane before they even turned up. This man was searching through their belongings. He was asking for money and even took one of the girls bags with him and dumped it down down another country lane a mile away. Even though you couldn't put anything past Levi Belfield, robbery does seem to be the motive of this crime. Another thing to look at is Levi Belfield's previous crimes. He seemed to have a specific victim type, young girls with blonde hair. Girls that he was attracted to, but he knew would have been repulsed by him. The motive for his known killings almost seemed to be revenge. 
and the Russell murders just seem to be something completely different. I mean the dog was killed. Nevertheless it will be interesting to read the confession and to see if Levi Belfield did offer something that only the police would have known. But with the information available if I was to have a guess the only things linking Levi Belfield to this is a hammer was used and something about a car. And if circumstantial evidence isn't good enough to say it was Michael Stone, then it's not good enough to say it was Levi Belfield. So I'm going to say no, I don't think this was Levi Belfield. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know why in the comment section.